Hi guys, good morning. It's another lovely Monday. I hope we're all doing fine. I trust you had a great weekend. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at a new topic, and our topic for today is leaders. So we're going to be looking at you know the we're going to review the features of a cylinder and then we'll just see okay how to calculate uh, one or two things with a cylinder. Now we all know what cylinders are, right? We'll get into that. But I want us to look at this redo for today. So let's just warm up, okay? So the question is not difficult. It's a trick question. Okay, um, 10 fish are in a tank. Um, two of them drown, four swim away, and three of them die. How many are left in the tank? So how many are left? in the tank. Just think about it and try to figure out the answer. By the end of the class, you know, you know whether you were right or not. Okay, so that's our riddle for today. Okay, um, let's move on. Now we're going to review some pictures, like I said, of the cylinder. So this is an example of a cylinder. Okay, now we all are familiar with cylindrical objects. Okay, I have one here. This is a cylindrical cup, for example. So we, we all are familiar with cylindrical objects, you know, and then we need to sometimes, okay, for example, we have buckets at home that are cylindrical. We have milk, tin, milk tins at home. We have milo tins, you know, big red, basically big red tins at home. Most of them are cylindrical, most, not all, anyway. And our buckets, some of them are cylindrical, some of them are in full stream form, but most of them are also cylindrical, okay? As time goes on, you'll find out what a full stream is, but that's not today's topic okay now so in, in situations where okay sometimes we have buckets that um where measurements for their volume are indicated and all that now in situations where we want to find maybe the measurement or volume for a, a, an object for area and then we don't have any um, labelings or any measurements indicated it's something that we need to know how to do right so it's a good thing for you to know how to you know, find the area and volume of these cylindrical objects since you, you use them in daylight, in daily life. So now, before we go into any calculations whatsoever or any proof or any, um, you know, trying to prove the formula and all that, but let's first look at the features. Let's review the features. Okay, so features of the cylinder. Now, first of all, number one, it has two circular plane faces. Okay, two circular plane faces, one on the top and one on the bottom. Okay, so two faces on top and under it. If you have a milk tin at home, you can just confirm that. It has a circular face on top and a circular face under it. You can confirm that. Now, number two, the second feature is, is that it has one curved face, one curved face. Okay, that curved face is actually the body, the body of the cylinder, the body. The round part that is endless that your hand just keeps going around and around it, right? So that's the cup face, okay? That's a cup face. So now it has no vertices. That it has no sharp points, okay? It has no sharp points. It has no vertices. The sharp point um, where two edges meet is called a vertex. The plural of that is vertices, and it has none of that, okay? Then it has two curved edges. If you touch the top, if you touch the bottom, the edge around here, and the edge here, you know, it has two curved edges, okay, two curved edges. So those are some of the features of a cylinder, okay? Those are some of the features of a cylinder. Now, let's move on. Let's move on to something else, okay? Now, the net of a cylinder, I don't know if you've seen this before, this is the net of a cylinder. When, when we say net of a cylinder, it means, you know, when you cut a cylinder into its different parts, when you cut a cylinder into its parts, how does it look like? Okay, so you can see the two curved, you can see the two circular faces, you know, one of the circle up and down, and you can see that the curved face has turned into a rectangle now. The curved face that we said just keeps going round and round actually is a rectangle when you cut it out. Okay, so this is actually the net of the cylinder. If you, if you do something like this and you try to join it back together, you get a cylinder back. Okay? So that's the net of the cylinder. Now, 
let's talk about the net. It consists of three parts. That that's clear, okay? A circular top, a circular bottom, and a rectangle, which is called the cup surface, which is the cup surface that has been cut out to form a rectangle. Okay, it's important that you know this, and so and so that you don't need to cram formulas. You know the formula for the area, the volume, and all that. You don't need to cram those formulas if you understand the net of these shapes. Okay, because it's from the net that we can actually derive the formulas for finding area or volume and all that. Okay, so let's move on now. Let's talk about cold surface area first. Let's talk about cold surface area first. Now, the cold portion, like we said, is a rectangle, right? We cut out the cold portion and it turns into a rectangle, right? Okay, so now, okay, you can actually try it out, you know. You can try it out. You can make, um, try to make a cardboard um, cylinder and see if you get a, a curved portion as the, like, as a rectangle. So now it makes our work easy to find the curved surface area because we already know that a rectangle is the formula for area of a rectangle is length times breadth. So let's just pick out the length. You can see the length, and you can see that this is the breadth of the rectangle. So our uh, curved surface area here is length times breadth. Okay, but there's a peculiarity here because the length of that rectangle is going to be the same as the circumference of the circle. Remember that before we cut, before we cut, cut it out, before we cut it into the net, it looks something like this, right? Now this is the curved, the circle. Although this is this is open on, on top. Let me use the bottom. So when we cut this out, we know that this is a circle, right? It's a circle, and then by the time we cut this up and we have the curved surface as a rectangle, we need to remember that the rectangle was actually curved before to form, to, to be along the edge of this circle. So the, the length of the rectangle is the same thing as the circumference of this circle, okay? The length of the rectangle out there is the same thing as the circumference of the circle because at one point, they were together. They were together, they were bound together. Okay, so remember the circumference of the circle is what? The formula of the circumference of the circle is pi d or 2 pi r. Let's go with 2 pi r. So cut surface area here is going to be 2 pi r times h. Remember that h is the height of the rect of the, should I say the cylinder? But it's the same thing as the breadth of the rectangle. Okay, just try to understand. It's the same thing as the breadth of a rectangle when it has been cut out, but when it was bound together, it was the height of the cylinder, okay? So our cross surface area is actually 2 pi r times h, okay? Now when, when we now um, put that together, we have 2 pi r h. So I know you've heard of this formula probably before, and then you're wondering how was that formula obtained? Yeah, it's from the rectangle, which is the curved portion of the cylinder. So the formula for the cross surface area of a rectangle Sorry, of a, um, okay, it's a rectangle here, but of a cylinder is 2 pi r h, okay? So try to remember that 2 pi r h, okay? That's the curved surface area. Now, let's move on to, let's move on to the total surface area. Now, I've replaced the b, that's the, you know, the breadth of the rectangle with, back with the height of the cylinder now, okay? Now, remember that total surface area means the, the, the total area of all the present, all the surfaces present. And we already said before that the net of a cylinder consists of two circular faces and one curved surface. We've been able to get the formula for the curved surface, right? Now, to get the total surface area, we're just going to add the area of the circular face to it. Look at this. The total surface area is, in essence, the area of the two circles, okay? The area of the two circles, you can see the two circles in the net, plus the area of the rectangle now, okay? Plus the area of the rectangle now. But we've already gotten the area of the rectangle, so I think our work is half done. So let's move on to get the formula now. But remember that the formula for area of the circle is pi r squared, okay? The formula for area of the circle is pi r squared. Since we are dealing with two circles, okay, we are going to have pi r squared times two. Then we need to now bring back our formula for 
or you know the curved surface which is the area of the rectangle which is 2 pi r h so you can see that the pi r squared times 2 for the two circles plus 2 pi r h okay i hope that is easy to understand okay so if we resolve this of course pi r squared times 2 is 2 pi r squared right it's 2 pi r squared and then plus 2 pi r h now what i want you to know that this formula applies specifically to a cylinder that has the two circles the top and the bottom it has, that has the two circles what about a scenario where we have one side open like this cup we have one side open just one one side down is closed what do we do it's a if you if, you, if you've been understand if you've been getting an understanding of the proof for the, of the formula you should know that you know we got this proof when we had two circles right now when we have one all we need to do is get the area of one circle and add to the curved surface area so when you just have one end closed okay the formula now becomes just one circle pi r square plus two pi r h okay so don't get confused when they say okay two ends are closed you know that you have two circles involved so two pi r square plus two pi r h but when they say oh it's just one closed um part you know that it's just one circle so pi r square plus two pi r h okay let me put this question let me put this question out there what if you have no none of the edges closed you just have a cylinder with both ends open okay with both ends open think about it i'll give you one minute to think about it and then i'll tell you the answer so you just have you have you don't have any end closed you have both ends open okay so for this cup now although it's really moon i don't know what we'll do something like that for but you know <laughs> but let's just assume we have you know this end open and the other end open also so this same thing on both ends what do you think the formula will be for the total surface area okay let me just tell you let me tell you now you can listen to what the answer should be and see if you were right now if both ends are open it means there is no circular face it simply means that all we have is a curved surface so it's just going to be two pi r h it's almost as if you're finding the curved surface area okay so you don't have any circular face so it's just going to be two pi r h okay so that's that so i want you to always try to examine what you're what formula you're using, think about it, analyze it, you know, try to synthesize. Don't just say, okay, I know the formula, I've crammed the formula and I move on. No, try to figure out, you know, how was this formula derived? Except it's something that's way above your level of understanding, but if not, always try to do that. Okay, um, so that, that's that for the formula now. Let's try to use it in an example. So a cylindrical cup has a circular base of radius 7 cm and height 10 cm. We have to take pi to be 22 over 7 and calculate its curved surface area and the area of its circular base. Okay, this is a simple one. First of all, let's write out all the parameters that we were given. We have the radius is 7 centimeter, write that down. We have the height as 10 centimeters, you write that down. We have pi as 22 over 7. Okay, if you're not given pi, use 22 over 7. The, the value of pi is actually 22 over 7 anyway, except it's specified otherwise, okay? Because I have sometimes, I have some, some of my kids asking me sometimes, what is pi? When, when you're giving a question, pi might not be indicated, but you need to know that it's 22 over 7, okay? So um, the curve surface area now is going to be 2 pi r h. We already derived that formula. So all we need to do here is, um, you know, um, substitute our values into that formula now. So we're going to have something like this, 2 pi r h becomes 2 times 22 over 7 times 7 times 10. It's an easy one. Okay, so 7 can go in 7. So 7 cancels 7 out. And then we have 2 times 22 times 10. And then our answer becomes 440 centimeters square. Of 440 square centimeters. Okay, so that is our formula, our value for the curved surface area, and this can be practicalized with you know a cup at home. 
you know, all you need to do is put a meter rule or a ruler across the end and try to figure out the radius if you can. You know, you can measure the diameter and divide it into two, blah, blah, blah. So when you can figure out the radius, you can also try to get the height of your cup at home and then, you know, use that and say, okay, yeah, I can get the area of this cup. You know, try it out, try it out, it'll be fun. So that's the area of, cup surface area of our cup here. Now, but it also asks us to find the area of its circular base. Of course, it will have one base if it's an open cup. So let's just find the area of its circular base. So that's pi r squared. Remember, we're not dealing with, did he ask you for the top? They asked you for the base, so pi r squared. Now, so the area here will simply be 22 over 7 times 7 times 7, simple one. So that would be 154 centimeters square. Okay, so that's how you get the cup surface area of a cup and also it's the area of its base. Okay, let's move on to volume. Now, before I can talk about volume of a cylinder, I need to tell you that a cylinder is a special type of prism. Okay, a cylinder is a special type of prism. Prisms are shapes that you know have two end faces that are similar. You know, the end faces are the same, and then they have a height separating those end faces with other faces sometimes anyway. So, but you know, um, a cylinder is a special type of prism that has circular faces now, right? And we call it a cylinder. But let's just look at the general formula for finding the volume of a prism. And we take one example before we move to the cylinder. So the volume of a prism actually is simply the area of its end face. Like I said, it has two faces, but we just pick the area of one of its end faces times the distance between the two faces now. The distance between the two faces. So let's look at, you know, a type of prism. This is a special type of prism also called the cuboid. It's called a cuboid. Now, if you want to find the volume of this cuboid, you will look at the end face. Now, the end face is a rectangle. You can see we have the length and the width. The width is also called the breadth. So we have the length and the breadth as the end face, length times breadth, and then we have the distance between the faces as the height. So if, you, if you've seen this before, you know that the volume of a cuboid is length times breadth times height. So let's now go to the cylinder, which is a special type of prism. Now, the volume of a cylinder, remember, it's area of the end phase times distance between faces. I don't want you to just find the formula, try to see how we got it. So what's the area of the end phase here? Of course, the area of the end phase here is a circle. The end phase is a circle, so pi r squared, right? Pi r squared. And the distance between the, you know, faces is h. So the area of the end phase, they, I can, you can see that red arrow. Yeah, that's the end phase, one of the end faces, and it's a circle, so pi r squared, times the distance between two faces, which is h in this case. So h, pi r squared times h, gives us pi r squared h, okay? Pi r squared h. That is the formula for the volume of the cylinder. You might have heard this before, so this is how that formula is obtained, pi r squared h. It's a nice, it has a nice ring to it. <laughs> so it's something you can just put in your head, you know, for future reference, you know. So let's just take an application of this formula now. Let's apply it to um, a cylinder. A cylinder has a diameter of 14 centimeters and height 20 centimeters. Take pi to the 22 over 7 and find its volume in liters. Take pi to the 22 over 7 and find its volume in liters. That's a, a slight catch there. So we have a cylinder, you can see the cylinder with the diameter and the height there. So let's write out what we have. First of all, the diameter is 14, but to avoid any confusion, let's try to get the radius. Since we are used to pi r square h, let's try to get the radius. Remember that the radius is half of the diameter. So that is 14 over 2, which is 7 cm. Okay, I feel good. I feel good with that. Now the height is 20 cm. Okay, so that's that's the height. Then we know already that our volume is pi r square h. Don't forget that formula. Remember that our pi is 22 over 7, so let's substitute 22 over 7 times r square 
that's times 7 times 7 times height, which is 20. So if we sum the cancels at 7, we should have 20 times 7 times 20, which would then give us 3080 cm cubed now. Take note of the units or cubic centimeters now for volume. You know, volume is, um, is a cubic quantity because it's, um, you know, it takes into account the three different dimensions, okay? So 3,080 cubic centimeters, 3,080 cm cubed. Now, but there's a problem. Okay, not necessarily a problem, but there's a hitch. Oh, okay, I'm still using the hitch. There's a, there's a, there's a further step we need to take. Let, let me put it like that. <laughs> Our answer is supposed to be in liters, and we have it in cm cubed. So we need to do some manipulations and calculations here. Take note that one liter is, um, you know, 1,000 cm cubed. Always try to remember your combustion rates, you know, if you've forgotten them. One liter is 1,000 cm cubed. So if 1,000 cm cubed is one liter, then 3,000 cm cubed should be, the, sorry, 3,080 cm cubed should be 3,080 divided by 1,000. So if we do that division, it comes down to, 3.08 liters okay 3.08 liters so if you're asked to find the volume of um, the cylinder in liters remember to convert from cm cubed to liters or um, meter cubed to liters as the case may be okay so that's that for our example and volume okay that's that's a very short one there's not much to do here there's not much to do here. So I wanted to just summarize what we have learned today. So what have we learned? So number one, or number, well, the first thing we've learned is that a cylinder has three faces, you know, two circular faces and a curved face, a curved surface, which is also a rectangle when it's cut out into the net of the cylinder. Then we have also learned that the curved surface area of the cylinder is two pi r h. The formula is two pi r h, and we showed how to derive that formula. Then we've also learned that when the cylinder is closed at both ends, it, the formula for finding the total surface area is two pi r squared plus two pi r h. And then we've learned that if it's closed at just one end, um, you know, it's going to be pi r squared plus um, pi r squared plus two pi r h. So it's going to be pi r squared plus two pi r h. Now, um, for volume, we also found the formula to be pi r squared h. Okay, that's the formula for getting the volume of a cylinder, got it to be pi r squared h. And that's the summary of everything we've done today. We just, we're just looking at one particular shape, which is a cylinder, and we said it's a special type of prism with two circular end faces. Okay, so try not to forget everything we've learned about cylinders today. Okay, it's important to remember, you know, it's simple, yeah, it's simple. So let's look at, um, you know, our riddle that we looked at. We said 10 fish are in a tank, two drown, four swim away, and three die. How many are left? Okay, the answer is 10. <laughs> if you said seven, no, if you said, um, six no if you said eight no if you said one no <laughs> first of all fish do not drown i don't understand how fish will drown because that the water is their natural habitat so fish do not drown <laughs> number four how could they swim away from a tank <laughs> so they could not have swum out of the tank and number three the third one is if they die they would still be in the tank they'll just be dead they'll still be in the tank so how many are left in the tank is 10. There are still 10 fish left in the tank. <laughs> I told you it's a trick question. <laughs> so if you got it, thumbs up to you. Okay. So I would like you to do a little, um, you know, some home activity for me. Try this out. Find the top surface area, total surface area and the volume of the cylinder below. All, all units are in centimeters and this is another one. If the volume of the cylinder below is 2,310 2, cm cube, what is the height? Okay, what is the height there? Okay, okay. 
So, um, one more thing I want you to do is I want you to I want you to try if you can do that. Visit um, Quizzes at Home if you can and try to play some games on cylinders if you are able to find some. But try to solve these two questions. Try to solve them and let's see, you know, how well you can do them and how well you've understood our topic for today. Okay, so. It's been lovely speaking to you guys again today and, you know, just having a wonderful class with you. Remember, if you have any questions, suggestions, um, topics you want us to treat, you can comment in the, you know, leave a comment in the comment section. And then don't forget to like the video and, you know, share to your friends and also subscribe, you know, tell them to subscribe for more weekly updates. And then as time goes on, I will be looking out for more interactions with you guys, you know, watching. So let's walk towards something interesting. So it's been a lovely you know, morning or afternoon, wherever you are, or evening. And I hope you continue to have a lovely day. I'll see you guys next week, Monday, for another class on junior mathematics. So have fun. Bye.